All right, what's up guys? We got a new product in the garage and this is from Apollo. This is the Phantom V3 2023. This is a 52 volt scooter. You have a 23.4 amp hour battery that you're basically standing on right here. Quadruple suspension. I've actually been getting off of work and just enjoying just going up and down the street, going to the mailbox, going to my buddy's house on the other block. And this thing is a dream. It feels so good. You also have Ludo mode, which turns this thing up to 41 miles per hour. Now they do have a Mach 1 controller in here. It's only one and it's powering both of these motors that has 1200 watts each. So that's 2400 watts total. So I heard there's like an overheating issue, but I'm not 100% sure on that, but we'll definitely see if it happens on a ride because you know, I like to ride super fast. But this thing is one of the most comfortable scooters ever. And here's me standing on it. You guys get an idea? Maybe? Come on! <laughs> All right, enough of that. All right, so let's start off in the back of this scooter. Now you do have a rear fender right here. I like that they give you these uh, cover caps for the axles so it looks like a cleaner setup. I will say that uh, they are pretty hard to put on there, which is good because you don't want those to come off. Uh, this could have been a little bit shorter from the company. They could have cut that because uh, it's just kind of hanging there, but it's all right. It's not that big a deal. Nice big tires on here as well. You want to air those up to 50 PSI. You do have a brake light right there as well. You got your turn signal indicators on this side and the same on this side. Then you have a nice rubber platform that you can actually take off with all these screws right here. And it is very comfortable. This is definitely gonna save your feet on long trips and bumpy terrain. So I like that and it's easily to be replaced. Over here on this side is where you have your little kickstand and you have your dual charging ports. It does only come with one battery charger. So if you do wanna charge this twice as fast, you can order an extra charger on their website. And this kickstand is perfectly fine. Be careful though when setting this on an incline, it could accidentally kind of come down. So just be weary of that. Uh, but if you put it on a flat surface, you'll be perfectly fine. In the front right here, you're gonna have your turn signals right at that corner. It's gonna be the same for the other side as well. Then you're gonna have this cable. You're probably wondering what the heck this big old cable's for, and that's for the front motor power. I would have liked to have seen it a little bit shorter. I understand when you turn, it's gonna get a little tighter, but I will say that it could have been routed a different way or something, I don't know, or zip tied somewhere. That would have been a little bit of a cleaner setup. But real quick, uh, this is the motor if you wanna see any of the numbers on there. So you can uh, take a screenshot of that. All right, so here's how the latching mechanism works. And this is what I love about this thing. There's so many ways that this thing is not gonna unfold down on you or come loose or anything like that. So you have a safety little thing right here and you can see that by flipping it around right there. So that latches up to this thing that we have on the back where you just basically pull this down. But before you pull this down, pull this pin out. The pin comes out like that, so it'll make sure it doesn't fold down on you. Then you can unloosen that and then it folds. So you have three ways that it's not gonna fail on you and it feels very solid. That's one of the things I noticed because I've been on some scooters that you just ride them, the cheaper ones, and it feels very flimsy. This one doesn't feel flimsy at all, it feels really good. Here's a look at the top of the scooter if you were to stand on it for the first time. So looking over here, some very, very nice rubber grips right here. They don't lock, so they do move a little bit, but I will say these things feel so fantastic in the hands. These are some of the best grips I've felt. And then obviously you don't have hydraulic brakes, you got cable brakes, which is okay. Not that bad, but you have a very nice bell right here. Very easy and compact and it's super easy to hit it with your little uh, index finger right there. Super nice, I like that. Then you have your uh, menu button so you can kind of go through the settings. You have your turn signal button right here. This is your region. Then come over here, that's your display. We'll have to take this off, which I'll just do right now. Oh man, oh, oh is it scratched? Oh, I got a little dinged up I guess during shipment. Oh, that kind of sucks. Uh, coming over here, this is where you turn the scooter on. You notice it does make a noise when the scooter comes on for the first time. It's pretty cool. I like the noises that it makes. It also makes a noise when you use your turn signal as well. So if you come over here and hit this, there you go. And you can see it way down there. These things are very bright and they turn off by themselves just in case you leave it on for whatever reason. So that is super cool. But if you are sitting at a light for a very long time, it will probably turn off on you. You're probably gonna have to uh, turn it back on again. 
Then over here is where you have your throttle, very nice and smooth throttle, then same grip and then the same uh, cable brakes on this side. Now going back to that menu button, you can hit this and you can go through the time that the scooter's been on, you can go to the trip, you can also go to your odometer, so you can see that I have been riding this thing for a while. Then I can go to voltage. Voltage is super nice. I like the fact that they give you that option so you can see where your battery's at instead of going off these battery bars. So kudos to them for adding that on there. And the next thing is your battery remaining as well, which is pretty cool too. So that gives you like three different options of battery level, percentage, battery bars, and voltage. Super nice. And then it goes back to the beginning on where we started at. If you wanna turn on the headlight and the brake light, you double tap the power button and that shows you your headlight right there. It's very nice and bright. It's hard to see because I have lights on in this garage, but we will take it for another ride to work and we'll definitely do a night riding footage video of it. But I haven't had any problems with it. I thought I was gonna have a problem because this is not adjustable. This bolts onto the scooter and you can't angle it this way, you can't angle it back, but it lights up the road perfectly fine. You're not gonna have an issue with it because I didn't. Okay, so in real time, real quick, with all the safety stuff on here and all the pins put in here, let's fold this thing down and see how fast it is. So I took that off, pulled the pin out, Let's move this down. This one's a little hard to move down, especially if you have that screw on this side really tight. After that, it just folds in half, and then you have this little hook right here on the top, and this hook goes right underneath there. It's 77 pounds, not super, super heavy, and there you go. But I will say, a small child probably would not be able to pick this up, but an average adult should be able to pick that up, and I'm not that strong, so it is heavy, but it's not that heavy. And then the fold it up, super simple. Put that back up, make sure that's down. Let's put that pin back in there. Fold that back up, put the safety thing on. There we go, we're good to go. Let's get out there on the road and uh, show you how badass this thing is, it's pretty fun. All right, so we're on the GoPro and we got a full battery, so you know what we gotta do. I'm right down the street, we're doing a speed test. 67 kilometers per hour. Oh God, don't pull out. Don't pull out, thanks. Uh, 69 kilometers per hour. We're jamming, almost 70. There we go, I saw 70 pop up real quick. All right, let me pull over here really quick. Let's see how fast we're actually going because I'm recording the speed. 41.6 miles per hour, there we go. So that's accurate. They say it does up to 41 miles per hour with Ludo mode. I'm 165 pounds, 170 pounds roughly and I'm almost reaching uh, 42 miles per hour. My Apollo scooter is about to pass you. <laughs> well, I have noticed after about 60 kilometers, which is roughly probably like 30 something miles per hour, it does have a slight vibration from the front, but I did not check these tires and air them up to where they're supposed to be. So you're supposed to air these tires up to 50 PSI and I'm just riding it right out of the box. I highly don't recommend that, but I am a professional, so uh, Let's keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. Safety first above anything. That's why I got gloves on today's trip. You never know what's going to happen. I also love how wide this deck is. So I rode another scooter in another review, and the deck was so much shorter. Look at all the room. I have so much room to, like, put my feet everywhere. It's super, super nice. And now I do have push to start, which you probably saw right there. You can turn that feature off when you want to leave from a light. I don't mind the push to start, but if you definitely want to go fast right off the bat, then yeah, you might want to change that. So smooth going so fast. Now let's try out the regenerative braking right now instead of using the brakes. Here we go. Regenerative brakes. Oh, that is lovely. You'll never have to use the brakes. All right, we are in the designated spot where we do our tests and I put it in gear number one. We took it out of Ludo mode. So let's just see how fast it is in eco mode. So here we go, one, two, three. I gotta push off a little bit. Very nice and gradual. Anyone getting into scooters can definitely ride it very comfortably at this speed. This is not bad. And then if you wanna put it in mode number two, you give it a little bit more kick. This is mode two right here. A little bit more of a pickup. You definitely get more power, actually a lot more power uh, from one to two. It's a huge difference. Eco mode is definitely gonna be a beginner and then mode two will be if you've like been on these things a little bit longer and have a little bit more experience. Then you have mode number three. Let's try mode number three out. One, two, three. Get a push off. Oh, got a little bit of a pull out action going on. 
This definitely has way more power. Yeah, mode three feels great. It feels almost just like Ludo mode. It's just, I think it limits your top speed. But we're still doing like 65 kilometers per hour, which is almost 40. But Ludo mode is definitely going to give you that top speed that you want over 40 miles an hour. But mode three is fantastic as well. Hmm. And I told you guys I was going to use the regen brake and I totally forgot. I started using the regular brakes. I guess I'm just so used to it. And if you guys do want to go back into Ludo mode or put your scooter in Ludo mode, if you don't even know how to do it, three taps on the power button. So watch the screen. One, two, three. There we go. We're in Ludo mode. Now we got all the power possible. Yeah, so this thing isn't gonna blow your socks off with like power, but if you've never had a scooter before, you are not gonna complain about this thing. But if you've been on some fast scooters that are like 60 miles an hour, this is definitely not that fast, but it is a smooth fast. That's what I like about it. I'd rather take the comfortable ride and decent speed over something that's super fast and jarring and not as comfortable. Now real quick, this is how it looks out in the sun instead of being out in my garage. And honestly, it's a clean look. They do have some logos on it. You have that main logo right there on the stem. Then you have the logo right there on the pad. You could Sharpie them if you want. They aren't stickers, so you can't take this off, unfortunately. But overall, it's just a nice, clean look. It's not too bad. Like, I don't mind it at all. It doesn't stand out like a high-performance scooter, but it definitely feels like a premium scooter while riding it around. So another way is you can come into this phone, which I just connected with Bluetooth. It's very easy to set up. You can hit these little uh, white dots right here on the bottom. You can get into Ludo mode. You can go into your settings. You can turn on the high beam. This does not change the actual thing. This is, I think, is for cruise control. I'm not going to use cruise control on this thing. But let's go into the settings. We do have Ludo mode on right now. Our max speed is at the max, so that's as much as we can go. It says ludicrous speed. You see that little animation right there? Super cool. Uh, you can turn cruise control on right there. So kick the start. I'm going to take kick the start off, and that's basically the only setting I really came in here to change. You could also do your routes as well, so you can see, like, I don't want to do it too much because it's going to show my address, but it will do your ride history as well on where you went, so you can show your friends, like, where you got done riding and whatnot, which is pretty cool. Now that we don't have push to start on, let's see how badass this thing takes off. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so if you don't want to ruin your tires and you want to be able to hit it flat out, you might want to have push to start on, but if you start from a dead stop, it's definitely gonna peel out all the time. You could always obviously go with less power, of course, on the throttle. You can regulate your power, but who wants to do all that? You want the max power out of this thing, right? At least I do. All right, let me use regen. Keep forgetting about regen. Hello. One thing I think the company could have worked a little better on is how this sits. If you're gonna notice, let me turn this off so it doesn't whiskey throttle and I wreck it. Um, but see how this kind of just moves around? It's just a rubber cover. That's all it is. It's just a rubber cover that goes over the buttons. So I feel like they could have had a little bit more quality with that because look, it just unreveals plastic. Um, if they would have put like some super glue or some type of silicone here to hold this on, that would have felt a little bit more better. The, this other side is the same way. So I guess it makes it easy to replace these covers, but they also feel a little bit slippery and not that great. One thing I do like about the scooter is when I turn it on just now, it goes right into the mode that we last left off at. So we're in Ludo mode still, and it just saved all my settings. Going back to the app real quick, let's go into acceleration and braking. So I have the acceleration at 10. You can have your regen as high as you want. I've noticed it works very well. So I might keep mine, let's say at seven. I still feel like that's really high because regen works so damn good. You don't want to hit it too hard and be flown off the scooter. So let's save that and uh, we should be able to be on our way. I also switched the units on how this measures speed to miles per hour, but it did not switch over for some reason. I reset the power. I tried to get it working, but I'm stuck in kilometers per hour. Maybe I'll fix it in the other video. I'm not too sure, but it said it saved and went to the scooter, but it didn't work. So we're just left in that mode. But what I want to do is I want to switch this over to voltage. So 56.3 volts so far. Not too bad. Whee! <laughs> Let's see how this region works now. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of afraid, to be honest. Whoa! That's all regen right there. And I, I kind of gradually got into it because I wasn't sure how fast that was going to stop. So let's pull out. Whoa, the backslid. That's on seven. That's crazy. 
Look at those marks that I just left going all the way down. That's nuts. Regen's definitely working on this thing. God, this thing is so nice to maneuver and turn and, oh, I just feel so comfortable riding this thing. The fact that I could just use it like a skateboard on my feet wherever I want, it's such a big deck to work with. And the front is not loose whatsoever. Like there's no movement to the front. You do have to be careful with this type of speed though, uh, going around turns and whatnot, <laughs> which matter of fact, let's get into the turns right now. This is where we do our turn test. Um, definitely turns faster than I would probably want it to go, <laughs> safely anyway. So if you guys are a scooter expert, you guys aren't gonna have any type of problem. These are fantastic tires for street use. I didn't really go in the dirt today because they aren't knobbies. They're really just made for the street and I'm not trying to wash out. You can go off of like light gravel and dirt like that, but I definitely wouldn't take any spots with bumps. Even though it's very comfortable and has quad duper suspension, it's, it's just really not a scooter made to go off road. Uh, look at a different scooter if you're really looking at just doing off-road stuff or that's what you have to take when you go to work and stuff is some dirt trails. I wouldn't get this one. Use this one for street riding. It's definitely made to handle all streets. So we're going to do a uh, brake test. I'm going to try to keep this test normal. Let's stay at, let's stay at like 54 to 55 kilometers per hour. I'm going pretty fast. And we're going to use regen only. So one, two, three. That's so cool. And it comes to a gradual stop as well, right towards the end. So obviously I started way over there with that slab of cement at. Most of my bikes that are really bad end up right like around this line. So obviously it's region. It's not going to stop you as crazy as like using actual brakes, but you can also go up. We still had three more modes to go up. We're on seven out of 10. So you guys can change the region if you want a little bit stronger, but let's actually try the brakes out now and see how well it stops at that same speed. All right, so we're almost there, 54. <laughs> oh man, so we just slid. Uh, you can obviously see that line from where I started out. It's pretty... <laughs> The brakes work good, but there's really not much tire contact on the ground. So I literally just slid side to side and I tried to keep it as best as I could. I started trying to let off a little bit right here, but <laughs> that was too funny, man. So definitely make sure you're not going super fast if you're going to be around a lot of traffic, because obviously it did not stop as good as most e-bikes do. But we're also hauling ass on this thing, too. We're definitely going faster than I normally do on my e-bike reviews. But that was fantastic. That was pretty fun. Real quick, let me pull up my phone and see if we hit any more of a higher top speed. Nope. So we've done 4.5 miles and we're at 55.5 volts and our top speed is still 41.6. That makes sense because it's the, you know, the most charge we have. That's the fastest you're going to go. You're going to start losing mile per hour little by little as you ride this thing. So just keep that in mind. 41 miles an hour, but realistically, when you're probably half battery, I can see you getting maybe like 36 to 35 miles per hour. So... Just keep that in mind. We out of here. <laughs> I love this thing. I love it. The coolest thing about this is probably that region and how the controller is set up. It is so smooth to regulate the power. So like, look, if I just barely want to move, I barely have the throttle down at like 10% and we're just coasting. And then if I want to give it a little bit more power, it starts moving a little bit faster. And then if I really want the power, then it really goes. Let's try to jump off this curb. <laughs> nice and smooth it definitely feels weird compared to you know a bike going off the curb but nice and smooth when i landed it's definitely plush <laughs> this thing's awesome now let's see how the response is on the throttle and I, well i'll tell you right now it's pretty instant so one two three <laughs> you can hear us peeling out so that's going to be your indication on when it's hitting so one two three <laughs> one two three yeah, so this thing is instant. You're not gonna have a problem with wanting to hit the throttle when you need the power. It's always there on demand. Regen is the same way. It's instant, instant. It's almost like hitting the brakes. So Regen is something I would highly recommend you using the scooter for, but man, if you want a very comfortable scooter, this thing is not bad. If you need to whatever, make it softer or harder, you do have adjustments right here. So you can get a little wrench and start turning these and make them a little bit more softer if you want. So it's something to just keep in mind if it's a little too soft for you, if you're a little heavier. 
Um, but I'm not having a problem at 165 pounds. Not too bad. This is like the perfect scooter just to kind of ride with your friends on a group ride because you're really not going 40 miles an hour on a group ride. You're going to get decent range out of it as well. I believe they say you get about 40 miles of range if you're doing about 20 miles an hour. And then you're definitely going to get like somewhere in the 25 mile range if you're doing about 40 or 41 in Ludo mode which is pretty much what we're using the whole entire time anyway. Now, one of the oversights that I've noticed about the scooter as I've been riding it is the fact that, check this out. So I would like for this to be closer over to my thumb because see, I'm holding onto it. I'd, I'd like it to be closer because I got to move my hand more into the corner. Then it's rubbing against this little brake lever and the bell. Then I can hit the region. It feels more comfortable to hold onto the brakes but you can't move this any closer because if you come up here, look, the bell is in the way. So you can't slide this over anymore. So if you want to slide this over, uh, it looks like the bell is actually attached to the brake system. So you would have to unscrew this cap and probably take this off to be able to slide this over. So just something I noticed on this is regen brake is a little off to the side more than I would like for my hand size. But depending on your hand size, you might not have a problem. I know a lot of people in the comments are going to think, man, that's a really pricey scooter for the power and everything like that because obviously yeah it doesn't have the most power of every scooter out there but you're really paying for the quality of it it feels so premium it doesn't feel cheap in any way and it feels so comfortable my feet aren't even hurting yet when i rode another scooter and did a review on it my feet were hurting so bad within like four or five miles and this thing no and the fact that i could just move my feet around i already said it's so nice Let's see how it is to get up some of these curbs real quick. Oh yeah, <laughs> that wasn't bad at all. Now that wasn't like a straight solid curb. It was like half a curb, but it still went up it pretty fine. Then we could do some burnouts. <laughs> I will say it does have a slight delay from when uh, the power comes in. So maybe like the first I would say maybe two or three miles per hour when you hit it, you can feel that it kind of like moves and then it just hits. So just keep that in mind is when you do hit it, the throttle response is instant. It's just the full power doesn't come onto the vehicle for maybe like a full second. Not that big of a delay though. Something that I'm not really noticing too much, but it's something to point out. One thing I'm really worried about trying is the region with all the brakes. <laughs> it's gonna work the same i tried it right now but it just slides regardless so it's just a matter of how skinny of a tire you have on the road it's just gonna slide regardless but it definitely locks them up i love it overall and obviously hitting the brakes it does flash so that's super cool people can see what's going on what you're doing and it's pretty bright as well it is pretty low though keep in mind it's not like way up here to like an e-bike it's way down there but not too bad. So let's go back to the house. Let me give you guys my final conclusion on this scooter. So I know there's gonna be a lot of people saying it's expensive. Can you ride through the grass? Oh yeah, just be careful. Not too bad. All right guys, well, I'm back. You know, we always have to fix the hair every time we get back from these rides because those full face helmets, but I'm pretty sure it's jacked up. <laughs> I don't have really any complaints about this scooter, honestly. Me personally, being older, I actually like this more than a faster scooter that feels cheaper and more jankier and less uncomfortable. I would actually pay more of a premium to get more of a softer ride, but that's just me personally. If you're younger, you might not care about how jarring a scooter is, and you might wanna spend 15, 1600 bucks and get a scooter that goes faster than this, has more power, maybe 60 volt or 72 volt. I understand that, but as you get older, this is luxury to me. This is like luxury performance, I like the fact that you know it's not crazy fast, but it's fast enough to get around town. You're definitely gonna be able to keep up with traffic on main streets, especially if you're in Ludo mode. But if you wanna save battery life, you can go into mode one, two, and three. Mode three basically feels the same as Ludo mode other than the top speed, I think it just limits you. Um, the range is gonna be very good on this scooter, not too bad. The battery capacity is good. The cable management could be a little bit better down here. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of this wire just kinda hanging down there. I feel like maybe zip tying it to here so it looks a little bit more cleaner would 
would be nice. Um, this does get really dirty because it's all black, so you can see a lot of my feet prints on it and stuff like that. But I like the fact that you do have fenders front and back, so you're gonna be covered from water and debris and stuff like that. The brakes felt fine, even though they aren't hydraulic. They're pretty much, they're fine for this type of scooter. You're gonna be sliding your tire more than anything, so that's perfectly fine. I like this locking mechanism right here uh, when it folds down because this isn't making noise hitting the frame and it's very sturdy on there. So it's not gonna be moving around and flapping around like some other scooters we reviewed. So I like that. This is solid as hell. This whole thing right here is perfectly solid. I didn't have any issues with riding it where it felt loose and everything like that. I rode a Pegasus uh, before and it wasn't a review unit. It's just one of my buddies and it definitely had some play and he had to fix and come up with some issue to get rid of that. This doesn't have it at all. So I'm not worried about this thing coming apart or anything. One thing I did notice is that the front, after you're doing over 60 kilometers per hour, um, it does have a little vibration to it. I don't know if the tires aired up to exactly 50 PSI, but it definitely looked like the whole front of it was shaking, but who knows what that is. But it definitely wasn't scary. It's just something you kind of feel as you're going that fast, and it's also gonna depend on the road you're on as well. Let me turn the scooter on, and we'll see where we're at. So I did 8.4 miles is what it says on my phone. I'm not lying about that, so let's go into our different modes and see where our voltage is at. So our voltage is at 53.2, we're down one battery bar. But when I did get to the house, it was down two battery bars, which left three remaining out of the five. So that was probably off a of voltage shag, but not too bad of a scooter, honestly. I'm gonna take it in another video. We're gonna see how the lights perform, the brake lights, and we're gonna be riding at night and I'm gonna do a probably like 13 to 14 mile trip and we're gonna see what our range is. So stick around for that video. And if you guys are really interested in this thing, this thing is fantastic, but keep in mind, it is slightly over $2,000. I think it's 2,100 bucks, but I'll have any type of links and discount codes down in the description. I'll also put them up on the screen if I get them before the video goes out. But I love you guys. I appreciate you for watching to the end of this video. This is one I highly recommend if you want comfort over having the most sporty performance scooter out there, but this thing is awesome, especially the region. You can't go wrong with a region. I'm loving this region on this thing. That's probably my favorite thing. All right, guys, you guys are true MVPs. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. It is hot in the garage. We got to get out of here. Are you turning or no? Are you turning or no? What are you doing? Let me know what you're doing. A signal would have been great, lady. A signal would have been great. Gotta love people. I would have slowed down, no problem, but use your damn signal. <laughs>